watching with those goggles. I'm looking at some cool gadgets in China. It's so amazing. You must show me. Show me China. Here's the thing. The VR image is really hard to describe or show unless you're wearing a helmet. Look, this is a metaphor. It's really not easy to show what is going on in China to the international audience if they are not here. What if we find some foreigners who are experiencing digital China? And they can become a bridge and show digital China to the world. Hmm, good idea. Let's do it. Let's go digital. Robert Quash is a French designer. Four years ago, he quit his job in Germany and came to Xiamen to join one of the top shoe brands in China. During all my business trip in China, I was like very attracted to the Chinese energy, like in this country, like how this country grow, same as Anta, and I feel like I wanted to be part of it. In recent years, the designing industry has quickly digitized in China and around the world. Robert and his colleagues designing tools mostly depend on electronic devices. Two years ago, Robert learned how to use a VR three-dimensional tool to do this job, which is like a revolution in the industry. You put a helmet and you can see everything in 3D. So the advantage of uh, 3D is you can rotate your object. If in the air you turn quick, you add color, you change color materials, you draw line and you have everything in life. And the advantage of it, when you present this to your collaborators, sometimes they question, oh, how does it look like from the top? I don't see this from this angle. So you can ensure every angle of your ideas. Simon is a French yoga teacher in Shanghai. Normally, he teaches face-to-face -face classes. But today, he came to teach a virtual class through a smart mirror. This sharp image in the mirror makes you believe Simon is standing in front of you, but the technology is far more than that. Before Simon's going to teach a virtual yoga class, he decides to be a student first. Then coach Hu Chan activated the class by a cell phone app. I think as this is the first time that I'm practicing in front of a mirror, this is interesting because you can see yourself while you are uh, practicing. It's a good idea. When Simon is practicing, the smart motion sensors can track his movements, provide real-time feedback about his form, and count his reps as he follows workouts on its integrated display. This is quite good because you always have feedback on some details like the heartbeat and stuff. You see the mirror trying to correct your posture. Of course, this is better than a simple streaming class. Now, it's Simon's turn to go inside the mirror. Hi, Simon. Hi, Javi. We are in all of the education this side is our right side, but it is their right side. So you have to choose the right and the right side. The right side is the right side. The right side is the right side. Very good. The right side is the right Okay, let's do it. 大家好,我是西蒙老师,我今天展示一下一个很简单的瑜伽传练。我们现在开始做一个下圈式,腿你们的同步往后。While well, Simon is learning how to digitize his yoga class, John in Shenzhen is trying to make a robot act like a human. Dr. John M. Gonzalez a graduate from the University of California, Berkeley, was originally an algorithm engineer working on unmanned vehicle positioning systems. Last year, he jumped from the self-driving car industry to one of the top robotics companies in China. Because I enjoy using mathematics, physics, um, 
software and engineering tools to solve real world problems. You know, here I have the opportunity to leverage my multidisciplinary training and technical skill set to make a meaningful positive impact on society. After joining the robotic engineering team in China, John finds out that he needs to connect his skills to various fields in the application of the robot, and his knowledge keeps growing. At the same time, he gains rich experience in teamwork, especially in English and Chinese. The engineers at Ubitech are divided into teams that focus on specific functionality. So I work with engineers across these teams to add intelligent capabilities to our robots. So I've strengthened my expertise in navigation algorithms, localization algorithms, fleet control algorithms, especially um, language skills in English and Chinese since I have to coordinate between teams here in China and in the U.S. And now, John is working on a healthcare robot, which is quite an inspiring and exciting experience. I've learned that any robotic solution really needs to address the true problem or the pain points that medical staff or elderly, you know, face out in the field. Um, and that's something that you can't um, really replicate inside an office or a laboratory. It's something that you need to be out in the field to, to learn. The tech industry in China has grown tremendously over the past decade and I think it's a, an exciting time to be here. Hello, my name is Andreas Perotti. Andreas Perotti is a CMO in Vienna who is working for one of the top drone companies in China. Andreas is obsessed with the idea of passenger drones, which is a way to solve a lot of problems like traffic jams. A few years ago, he decided to join the drone company and be part of the effort to change the way of human life in the future. I'm really determined to join Yang because I think we can change the future lifestyle of mankind with these technologies. Yang is fantastic in software application, while the European aerospace industry is really sophisticated at hardware and combining the best of both worlds makes a really successful product and cooperation. I 100% believe in the potential of moving certain areas of our today's mobility chains up into the air. Being up in the air uh, has a lot of advantages, is super efficient. As mankind uh, conquering the lower airspace for our everyday lives and being a part of that journey in a company which is at the forefront here is a super exciting uh, endeavor. Andreas often traveled between China and Europe. He deeply fell in love with China. It's one country, but it's cultural-wise and development-wise very diversified. This is what makes it so interesting. There is so much variety. Uh, think about the cuisine, think about uh, the food, think about the cities versus the countryside, think, think about the people themselves. Now I'm constantly learning various Chinese software skills, learning to deal around with WeChat um, and other great products you have, uh, also to better perform our work. And yeah, at the end of the day, I'm trying to promote the power of drone technologies we have been creating worldwide. As China is rapidly moving towards digitalization, Andreas hopes that the world can benefit from that. He started from internationalized drone technologies in China in the fireworks shows call it aerial media in our portfolio. So you use basically hundreds or thousands of small drones uh, with LED lightings to create amazing performances up in the air. Um, and this business uh, is uh, quite, let's say, mature already in our domestic market um, back in China and it's now scaling uh, internationally. China is rapidly grow, growing and moving towards digitalization and I think the two sides should learn from each other and we should stop thinking. We're all on the same side at the end of the day because we all share uh, one beautiful and amazing planet. Wow, those are some really interesting stories. You know, it must be an exciting experience to be a part of Digital China. Our life has been revolutionized by progressing technology. Aren't you already experiencing them now? Am I? Look, this is the MR plus AR Intelligent Studio in Xinhua. Mm -hmm. One of our episodes was recorded here. Ah. I remember. Wow, now 
Oh, it's wow. the worst. Wow. Let's step into space. It's so amazing and it's so real. Oh, yeah. Wow. Take a look. MR is more immersive than VR, although the background around us does not exist physically, but the LED walls can take us to any place. Miranda, you're absolutely right. You know, it is amazing. It looks and feels so awesome. Let's go digital. <laughs>